today I am feeding the deer. Now, that might be something that some of you might think is kind of ridiculous. Why would you feed the deer? You're attracting deer to your garden. Uh, you don't want to do that. Other viewers um, might think that this is a really good idea and there are lots of reasons to feed the deer. Um, so I want to take you on this journey and tell you a little bit about why I'm feeding the deer today and all through the winter and what they actually eat, uh, how they find their food, little things like that. So what I've got here is a bag of deer feed. Um, this is... This is a mix of barley, oats, and cracked corn. You can see some cracked corn right there. Um, and it has molasses in it. It currently has 18% molasses. So at the beginning of the season, there's a lot of molasses in here. And by the end of the season, uh, the deer feed that you buy will have less molasses. It's pretty warm today, so I'm, I'm not sure we're gonna see any deer at all, but still, uh, we might. Um, so what I've done, is I've placed uh, some boards, some simple boards. And now I did this this morning and some of the deer have already come today and I'm just gonna come out and fill it out a little more. I just put a little line, not very much, here, around the other side. So and then over here on my stumps and you can see there's already a pretty good pile on each of these little stumps. I've been feeding the deer now for about three weeks, I think, ever since uh, ever since we got really heavy snow, and they have started to show up. So every day around two o'clock, the deer come, and right now we've got two regulars, um, and I'm calling them Tiny and Fuzzy Mo. So as you can see in the image here, uh, Tiny and Fuzzy Mo are really, really adorable. I find that the more places uh, that you have some deer feed outside, the more deer you can accommodate. That will help with things like fighting or the most aggressive deer will come in and eat first, but then there won't be anything left for the rest of them. Um, starvation is actually a really, really big problem. And it is estimated that about half of the deer population die every year from starvation. I'm not concerned about overpopulation because there are more than enough hunters around that are taking very good care of culling the flocks and or the herds, culling the herds and keeping, um, keeping our deer numbers down. So that's not a concern of mine. But what is a concern is I want to see bucks with large, full, uh, healthy antlers. I want to see does with healthy babies, preferably twins or triplets. Um, I want to see uh, deer that are fat, which keeps them nice and toasty warm. Now another thing, um, deer will paw the ground, they'll scratch around, but if you have more than eight inches of snow, they tend to give up. Um, and it really doesn't take that much for a deer to starve. Now I know that for spring, I'm going to have to put up um, deer fencing and I already have my eye on a specific type of deer fencing, so um, when I eventually get that, I'll talk to you guys, tell you about how and why and what. Now, most deer, um, you'll see them in the evening, and uh, dawn and at dusk, so in the early morning and in the evening, and you'll see them um, coming uh, around the edge. They don't like to be in the open too much, or if they are in the open, they like to make sure that they know where uh, where safety is. So they'll be in a field, but they'll be able to dash really quickly to get out of that field and back into cover if they need to. So here we've got uh, prickly ash all the way around this ridge, and let's see, I'm way over there too. And there's the wood pile in the middle, and then the feeders are right here. There's even a little bit of feeders right up next to the house. Um, right up next to the porch. They don't come that close very often, but sometimes they do. In fact, I wake up in the morning and that stuff's all gone. But I like to feed these guys around 12 o'clock, 12, 1 o'clock, after I've gone over and I've let the chickens out and I've given them fresh water and all that good stuff in the morning. And then I've dealt with my horse, taken him on a walk and uh, done his feet and groomed him and all that. Then I'll come back and I'll feed the deer. And then after that, I'll go in the house and maybe paint or or um, do some computer work or check comments or you know whatever it is make bread um, it's it's winter so <laughs> there's a lot of bread making computer working painting and uh, and reading going on 
Um, but after that, I'll come inside and then maybe an hour or two later, the little deer will start showing up. Now, right now we only have two deer that currently come to the house, sometimes three, but that third one doesn't come around very often. And that would be Tiny and Fuzzy Mo. That's what we've named them. Um, they're both adorable. Tiny, I think is a yearling, which means that it might've been born early last year. So this is its first year on its own without its mother. And little Mo, and I'm not, a, um, I'm not an expert on deer at all, but from what I've seen and from what I've researched and from other people that, that know a lot about deer, I believe that Fuzzy Mo is about two years old. He's a little bigger. Now, one of the neat things is I find that the first deer to show up are always the young ones. And that's because deer are extremely curious. So they will come out of the forest if they hear a noise, if they can smell some food, they will, they'll kind of poke around for a while. And once they see that no one's there, they'll come out and investigate. But the ones that do the investigating are the young ones. So it tends to be the yearlings that will show up first. At least that's my experience for sure. Once they have figured out where the paths are, you know, Tiny and Fuzzy Mo will leave their paths. And they actually leave a little bit of scent in their feet as they walk which is very cool, other deer will follow and will eventually have this lovely kind of deer highway going through what is essentially our backyard. I'm Scarlett, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Toodle -poo. Look, Mo, we gotta work on this.